country. You point fingers at society and say we need to speak up against us. At Umnyenye's um, family, you told him you're a father of a girl child. I'm a woman. And what this was done to me, it's beyond cruel. How can you stand up on a pulpit and speak against gender-based violence when you're perpetrating, when I'm become one of the victims of gender violence in the church? Melvin Boyson continues to minister, no matter what he's done. And you know full well I'm not the only one he's done it to. But he continues to minister. I asked for my letter of commendation four years back. It was within your power to give it to me. I could have gone to Australia. You chose not to do that. You told Bishop Bart it was he chose not to do it. I told Bishop Bart the day after my last hunger strike that I don't have a husband to support me. I've been on the streets. I've been hungry. I've been alone. I've been living in a shelter. One of your clergy, the Archbishop Tabo. I was one of them that voted for you to become an Archbishop because I looked up to you and I thought you were a man of God. I'm disappointed. I'm broken. I'm hurt. I feel that you don't care about me. You don't care the fact that I've slept in a shelter in Durban, that I've been beaten up, that I lived on the streets here in Cape Town, that at times I don't have food to eat. You don't care the fact that at times as a woman I couldn't even afford a sanitary towel. I took the newspaper that I picked up on the street and toilet paper wrapped around it that I got in public toilets. You did not care. You do not care that I was hungry. And what if the Bible says, when I was hungry, were you there? When I needed a neighbor, were you there? Archbishop Tabo, I'm a woman in the middle of a femicide in our country. Have you been there for me? Did you ever reach out to me? Do you actually care about what's happening to me? Where's the heart of God inside of you? You know full well for years and years and decades in the 70s and the 80s and later, boys have been sodomized in our church. It's been covered up. David <coughs> Daniels has done it to so many. He was given a wonderful clergy funeral and all the other perpetrators. Marvin Boyson continues to minister. What have you done to me? I'm 51 years old. I can't get a job. Where's your heart, Archbishop? Where? Do you not care about the women? One of your very own. What vows did you take before God when you made those vows when you knocked on that doors at the cathedral? Were you not supposed to shepherd of me as well, of the flock, of your clergy entrusted to you? Do you not care that I'm homeless, that I have nothing? Do you not care? Thank you, Jim, for sharing. As a pastor, I say, What you have highlighted now has been a very lonely journey for you and unknown to me. And for that, we are broken and we are sorry. The matter that you are raising of the boys that have been sodomized has come before us. The laws of the church, the rules of the church that are open and transparent of says if anyone has been sodomized, they can report that and we will not cover up anything. Your matter, Jim, as you know, during the last hunger strike pains me. And I went to the diocesan office and I spoke to you and I made an undertaking that indeed we will act. We put the things within the diocese and within the province to ensure that we care for women and we care for you. Your matter then was escalated to your legal people and as a diocese you sued for about four million pounds. And that disempowered us because it became a matter between your legal team and our legal team. And we said we want openness, we want fairness, and the reason
mean for five sets? So if I am wrong, if I've transgressed, that an ice resort that is African or anywhere, the matter has to go to the family. And you I found the flag. Mm. Yes, you came and saw me. You know? Mm. I had no intention of taking the legal route mm. at all. Mm. He made certain promises to me. Maybe mm. we forgot. He came there with a little book and he asked to talk privately and we walked the distance off. Mm. He had a little book and a pen. Mm. I told you what Melvin had done. Mm. He told me he will address the issue and you will deal with it. Mm. I told you it's now too late for the Australia Parish. You told me you will try and it was in your power to see if you can get their chaplaincy, maybe with the army or somewhere. And you asked me to go on a 30 day silence retreat somewhere. Those were the things you said to me. Mm. You then set up a meeting with Bishop Garth and Michael Weeder, mm. Reverend Michael Weeder, mm. in your, off your, your legal team's office. I don't know if it was Aegis or somewhere, I can't remember what the, your attorney's surname was at the time. You set up a meeting with them. You did not meet with me afterwards, as you said. Yes, yes, I spoke, and then I'd asked the lawyer to go with me. In the presence of my lawyer, the lawyer, because it was at the lawyer's offices, Arch um, Bishop Garth Council and Reverend Michael Weeder were present. I said to, B Arch to Bishop Garth, I said, please, can you just give my paper, my letter of commendation? Mm. I said to him, Bishop, you know I'm not married. I do not have a husband to support me. Without it, I'm basically homeless. I've got nowhere to go to. I have no job. Will you give it to me? He looked me straight in the face and he said, no. It was then when I said, then we go the legal route, because what must I do as a woman? I'm 51 years old, Archbishop Tabo Makoba. That is when I went the legal route because Bishop Garth just closed. And then shortly after that, the Sunday, you had written a letter which was read in all the churches. And lots of parishioners came back to me and told me the letter was written in the, read in the church that you had sent out saying that must have no communication with me whatsoever. And that is so much of the apartheid era. You silenced me. You never reached out to me. In these four years, you cannot say you did not know what happened to me because my legal team then contacted you, sent emails, because I had nothing. So what was I supposed to do but sue? I have absolutely nothing. I have no ministry. I have no income. I have nothing. I don't even own a bed. I had to literally sell all my possessions and my car just to eat. What do you think must happen to me now? I'm 51. I can't find a job anywhere. You stunted me from my ministry and you stopped me completely from everything. Uh, then, then, uh